going on guys i put here back with another video here today to give you all uh, a discussion video i wanted to talk a little bit about the title of king of new york and what it means in today's day and age so yeah let's get straight into it uh as the title says yeah i don't really believe that there's a king of new york in the current ethos of new york i know i made that video about like the crownings of the king video and that was really just kind of a, a, a title, a catchy title that I like. But in, in actuality, I really feel like the quote unquote king of New York uh, really has a, a very complex and uh, deep rooted history uh, within New York. And I think that uh, at the current moment, I don't truly believe that there's any anybody has truly captured the essence of uh, the king of New York <laughs> moniker. Uh, and so, yeah. I think that uh, one of the things I was thinking about when doing this video, first off, was what is the King of New York and what do you need to be the King of New York? Uh, when we look back at people who have been Kings of New York, such as Biggie Smalls, such as <clears throat> A Boogie, such as uh, 50 Cent, right? Uh, such as Pop Smoke, what did they have that other artists didn't quite have? Uh, and I think I've really distilled it down to three main factors. Uh, number one being a uh, hits. Uh, I think the reason why somebody like a, a Jay-Z or Nas don't quite carry the same mantra of King of New York is that they weren't quite able to reach the commercial heights, uh, especially in comparison to their... Uh, <clears throat> especially in comparison to their peers. Even though I would argue that Nas and Jay-Z were probably better than their respective competition in Biggie and 50 Cent uh, during both of their prime years, I would say that Biggie and 50 Cent were still more king-like in New York because they had more hits. They had more uh, songs that charted and went global and things of that nature and felt more like representatives of New York um, in a mainstream sense. And so I would say to start off, mainstream success and who has the most mainstream success is absolutely necessary when having this King of New York discussion. The other thing that I think is really important when having this King of New York discussion is New York's approval. Uh, I think that for you to be the king of New York, New York as a as a as a city, as a as a state has really got to get behind you. Um, and that's something that's less quantifiable uh, and more qualitative. And, you know, you kind of have to ask around to see what people think of um, who and what. But I think that uh, I'll get into this later. Um, but I think that there are certain artists who uh, may have a bunch of hits but don't quite have that New York feel, don't quite have that uh, New York cosign in the same way as other rappers do. Uh, think French Montana, think to some extent even Nicki Minaj, although I think that people mess with Nicki in New York. I just think that um, she went pop so, so, so early that she didn't really get, a t I, I don't think, uh, enough time to develop her like core New York fan base. But definitely French Montana is somebody who has the hits and even has some pretty solid albums but never really captured that king of new york moniker because the 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 streets in totality never really i guess saw french and and bump french as like a dominant force uh in new york he didn't really i don't think he ever got quite the recognition um that others did um and i think the final thing that you really need as a as a new york artist is an emblematic uh, and powerful album um, or project uh, to really stamp your mark as a uh, New York artist. This, I think, is something that is really important uh, because it basically separates you from a trend. It's very easy to have a hot song or have a hot album, uh, very easy to have a hot song or have a hot streak, but it's a lot more difficult to really come through with a solid body of work that people can deem timeless and incredible and impactful in a real, real way. My own personal subjective uh, opinion, 
But people like 6 9 at least to me, even when I was in New York and even at the height of 6 9s popularity, even before he went into jail, always felt like he was more writing trends than he was truly making incredible music. Again, even at the height of his popularity. And if you compare that to a Pop Smoke, it just doesn't compare. Why? Because one was following trends while another was making incredible bodies of work. Uh, one of the reasons why I think that Ja Rule didn't quite have the impact that a 50 Cent did is because while Ja Rule had single to single to single, it felt like 50 Cent dropped entire albums that really took the world by storm. Same thing with Biggie Smalls and same thing with Pop Smoke. They had entire albums that really shook up the country, or shook up the country, shook up the city. Um, and albums that we could point to as like, man, this is an incredible body of work. I think this is exemplified by the fact that if you look at the current New York rap scene and the current rappers who are dominating, we never really talk about album sales. Think about that, right? When's the last time that we've really talked about, man, someone from New York is really selling a, a bunch of units in an album? We've never really talked about that, especially with the current landscape of New York rappers. Uh, going into some people who I think perfectly uh, wrecking sort of perfectly are emblematic of the king of New York symbol or like I said Biggie I would definitely say uh, 50 cent uh, I would definitely say for a time ASAP and the ASAP mob and ASAP Rocky I would definitely say a boogie and most recently we've had pop smoke but I think the reason why there are no kings of New York right now is I just think that no one captures all of the essence in the same way that even a Pop Smoke did. And that's another thing that I do want to dispel. I do, you know, some people might say, oh, it's not possible to be the king of New York because uh, it, people don't drop albums like that anymore. But Pop Smoke did it. Pop Smoke had Meet the Woo Part 1, which was an incredibly impactful and strong uh, body of work and album and was just an album that we could all point to as this was the moment. This was an incredible body of work that we could point to. Um, and I just don't, and, and so I don't think that the modern era is necessarily impossible for someone to break through, but I wanted to talk a little bit about some artists who I feel like, now that we sort of talked about who is the king of New York or who was the king of New York, I wanted to kind of talk about why I feel like the certain crop of artists that I see now, I don't really feel like truly are emblematic of the King of New York moniker. So let's get into it. There's really four people we need to talk about when we talk about the King of New York moniker. Uh, and that would, I would think, be uh, Fabio Foreign, A Boogie, K Flock, and I Spice. And so let's let's go over it. I think K Flock uh, kind of runs into the problem of it being a, a bit of uh, um, a, a trend, kind of like I talked to about with Jaw Rule, where it feels more like hit after hit after hit and not a consistent stream and body of work. And so in my eyes, he doesn't quite hit the, the levels that he could hit because he doesn't have a consistent stream of body of work. I think also uh, K-Flock doesn't really... I think mainstream wise, he doesn't really have like, uh, like he doesn't really, he hasn't gone, I feel like far enough outside of New York to really, um, warrant that, Hey, I represent New York. Hey, look, everyone else, I represent New York, um, sort of ethos. And also, you know, it, it also doesn't help that, you know, when he maybe would have gotten the chance to, uh, sort of make that fire album or make that fire impact. He did get locked up, unfortunately. Uh, another candidate that I want to talk about, who I think right now is honestly the closest to being the king, or in this case, queen of New York, uh, would be Ice Spice. Uh, I know that she's just kind of come on the scene really fast, but I think that the amount of hits that she's dropping, the way that she's dominated, really was about to be a year, um, really, uh, with her music uh, is nothing short of kind of incredible. And I would say that while her album, Like, isn't incredible, it definitely turned people's heads and 
was definitely, I would say overall, it got positive reception. But I think where Ice Spice really falters is in the respect domain. Uh, I think that, and part of it, you know, is due to her being a woman. And I'm not saying that women can never be uh, king in New York because of the, the, you know, sexist male fans. But I do feel like Ice Spice kind of coming in as what seemed like a meme rapper um, makes her ascension a bit weird because instead of going from, oh, this is a solid rapper to now he's the king of New York, it kind of feels like we've gone from this is a meme industry plant to, oh, wait, she has actually pretty good music. For the most part, I think that's the genuine perspective of a lot of people in New York for Ice Spice's music. Um, and then getting into Fabio Foreign and A Boogie, while they fit the prior two categories of definitely, you know, having the respect of New York, uh, uh, especially A Boogie, and, uh, you know, having quality bodies of work, uh, similar to a Nas or a Jay-Z, I, not really Nas, I think really is, is kind of where this, it, 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 who really exemplifies the issue, um, is I don't think that they put enough hits up at the current moment. Uh, Favi had a solid song, City of Gods, but beyond that, when's the last time that we've heard a Favio Foreign song or an A Boogie song really sweep the nation? Um, uh, A Boogie's last album didn't sell as well, and, you know, uh, Favi's last project without warning because it was released with, uh, because it was released on, uh, you know, non-DSPs didn't really get the opportunity to really take off mainstream wise in the way that it could on top of the fact that like, it's unfortunately seeming like, and I mentioned this in my review that like, uh, the Kanye song is really what's going to be getting the most attention. And that song sucks, uh, and is probably the worst song on the album, uh, and so I, I also feel like to a large extent, uh, Favi and A Boogie at the current, current moment can't quite call themselves the King of New York in my eyes because they don't have enough hits out. Their, ring, their names aren't quite ringing um, in the ethos or whatever. And so I definitely feel like we haven't had a King of New York since Pop Smoke passed away, unfortunately. Uh, and that's also something that I feel like is uh sort of unfortunate is that like pop smoke really sort of had like months honestly he had like months of a rain um and it was snatched away from him like pretty much as soon as he got the crown in the first place which is honestly so 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 tragic um but i think that in you know with the empty hole that is pop no one has truly filled that hole um in a way that i feel like is like substantial and truly um attempts to like uh capture all of the things that pop smoke did for new yorkers so yeah i kind of just wanted to make this video as a way to get the conversation rolling around uh the king of new york and if there is any king of new york but i definitely feel like at the current moment uh there really isn't a king in New York and um maybe I could I, I would love and and to be clear right I would love to see an Ice Spice or a Fabio Foreign I think those are the two people who are closest to doing it I would love to see them develop and grow into that role but I think for the current moment it's uh kind of hard I think part of the reason also why this is the case um beyond just the artist not quite fitting the criteria is the current landscape of New York music. Sounds are moving and going and coming so, so, so fast. And so it's hard to keep up. And so to make uh, consistent and quality hits in today's landscape is very difficult, especially in comparison to what it was like in the older days. And so the problem eventually becomes that, you know, you uh, you come out with a hit with a specific, unique sound, but, you know, how long does that sound last? How long can you keep that up, right? Uh, and as crazy as it sounds, Fabio had his moment in the time in the sunlight, but you can honestly make the argument that, like, Fabio's sound 
is becoming less and less favored as we move forward and move forward, you know, within time. I think it's important to emphasize with this point that it's not necessarily that hip hop will move past you, but it's really that once you even falter a little bit or once you fall off a little bit, hip hop, it's it's very, very hard to make a comeback in today's day and age, especially if you just come with the refined version of your existing sound, right? But if you look at somebody like 21 Savage, hasn't changed his sound up for years, but is still got having a grip on hip hop. Why? Because he hasn't had a misstep yet. On the other hand, if you look at Baby, this last album was a bit of a misstep and he's been falling off ever since. Uh, and so, well, I do feel like it would. I would love to see another person crop through or even some of the people we have now crop through and dominate New York in a way and really show off for the city. I also wonder if the King of New York moniker is even necessary or even uh, relevant at this point in the place of hip hop and New York hip hop in general. Uh, wanted to make this video as a way to kind of start the discussion. Let me know what you all think in the comment section below. I really enjoyed making this video. And with that being said, peace, y'all.